Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Journey Across the Galaxy. Today's topic of discussion will be getting back into the swing of things, but as always, we're going to go through a quick intro for our new viewers so that they know what's going on. We are currently on our way out to Beagle Point. We started way back over here in the bubble where Earth and everything else, all the, you know, all human civilization is. And we made our way through the center of the galaxy to Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. And we are currently right here making our way out into this area where Beagle Point is. Let's go ahead, get off the ground. And up into space. We'll talk a little bit about what we're doing as far as our mission right now. Aside from going to Beagle Point, we're trying to work on getting our exobiology rank up to the elite status, as well as making enough money to eventually be able to buy a fleet carrier. Um, we're going to get into our super cruise here. I need to make a slight adjustment to my joystick axis because the yaw left and yaw right is being a little bit annoying. It's a little bit that I need to increase the dead zone on it. Uh, flight rotation. We're going to change the yaw axis. Let's add another five clicks into that and hopefully that'll make the difference for that. Okay, well, that's a little bit better. Well, let's go ahead and get out of the atmosphere here, or out of, out of the uh, drop area here, the orbital zone for the planet. I'm going to pull up to 45 degrees to hopefully get us around the planet a little bit faster. We're just waiting for the planet to get out of the way so we can engage our frame shift drive and jump on to the next system. Then we'll talk about the cycle of operations that we typically do as we're doing as we're going through each of these systems. Then we'll start talking about our uh, topic for the day, <laughs> which is going to be... I, I still need to give a little bit more... Oh, okay. I'm not sure what's going on with our throttle there. That's kind of annoying. It's not supposed to do that. External lights, night vision, forward fire, flight assist, hyperspace, dethrottle is off, super cruise assist is manual. Yeah, I'm not sure why my... Uh, Throttle didn't go back up where it's supposed to be. That would explain why it was taking us forever to get around the planet here. Alright, so, uh, there's a relatively boring and repetitive cycle that we do, which is uh, hopping into a system, popping the discovery scanner to see how many bodies there are in the system. Then after that, we'll complete a fuel scooping operation, assuming that the star that we're jumping to allows us to do that. I do have my galaxy filters or my map filters set up, my route filters set up so that uh, we're only going to stars or we should only be going to stars that allow us to fuel scoop. But unfortunately, um, you know, that's more of a suggestion or a guideline rather than a hard rule because sometimes you're going to come to places where there isn't a, a, fuel, a fuel scoopable star. <laughs> I cannot speak right now. What's going on here? Do I not have my... There is my discovery scanner. So we're going to pop our discovery scanner, see how many bodies are in here. Up oh, 13. So 15 is the arbitrary limit that I've set for doing full-on scans of the system. So we're going to pop into our discovery scanner here and start looking at planets. Uh, when, Regardless of how many bodies are in, a, are in a system, we typically try to remember to pop into the discovery scanner here to look for Earth-like worlds, if you look at the bottom right. Um, ammonia worlds or water worlds, those are worth going, taking time to go out of our way to go do a planetary scan, even though we can't land there or do exobiology, because they're worth a decent amount of money. And now we're going to go through and individually look at each one of these bodies to see if there are any biological features. As you can see up there in the top right, there is one, but I typically like to find bodies that have at least two, because if it's just one, it's almost always a bacteria of some kind, which can be valuable, but usually is not. So we're going to we're going to hold out for something a little bit better until we get uh, closer to the end of the episode here. So for now, we're going to look at this stuff. And then hopefully we'll find ourselves a planet that has at least two biological signatures on it, which will, you know, make it worth our time to go and take a peek at whatever's there. But otherwise, we'll get into the topic of discussion for today. Let's finish doing our scan here first because I don't want to get interrupted and end up finding something cool and then I lose my train of thought. That happens way too much. That happens a lot. <laughs> it happens a lot in this uh, in this series. I'll start I'll start in on a topic of conversation, and then I get distracted by other things that are happening, and I lose lose my mind a little bit. All right. Well, guess we're not doing that. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next system. 
So, getting back in... Well, before I do that... Let's go back and add some controls in for my joystick because I don't need the... I don't need... What am I looking for? Flight miscellaneous. I want engine boost to be... Uh, well, engine boost can be tab because we're only going to use that when we're in the other mode anyways. So, frame shift drive and super cruise. There we go. Sweet, now I can use the joystick for everything on the right side. Um, so getting back into the swing of things, that's the topic of today's discussion portion. I typically try to have some kind of discussion to uh, pass the time as we do these, because obviously watching the same thing over and over again is going to get pretty boring. Um, recently, I ha we have moved back into the travel trailer, because that's just the kind of lifestyle that I want to live, and my wife is totally cool with it. And uh, we are currently in one of the national parks in San Diego County doing volunteer work to in trade for a spot uh, a spot to park our trailer and uh, I have a regular schedule now I haven't really had a regular schedule for quite a while um, because we were living in Mexico and I wasn't able to work there so I had to find try to find some way of doing um, is that a, I think that's a rocky ice world but there's only seven bodies here we'll go ahead and do a full-on scan just to see if maybe we can find some biology uh, maybe. I do not intentionally break up my conversation. It's just I have to st I have to stop and start talking about the game when things actually happen. So that's just kind of the way it goes. And I guess the the happy side effect of that is is it draws out the watch time if you're in actually interested in what I'm have what I have to say. All right, moving back along. Um, so we are. Uh, I, I, we were living in Mexico for a year, and I wasn't able to work because I'm not a citizen, and they, they and I didn't have. I didn't have all the paperwork and stuff. I needed to be able to get a work permit or whatever else it is that I needed to be able to do that there. So I basically had all of my time to myself because my wife was working and she was able to do that. So I was working on, I've been working on my channel really steadily and relatively hard for the last year. I finally got to the point a couple months ago where I'm actually getting paid, which is pretty nice. Um, but, you know, it's a very little, a very tiny amount of money right now. I'm waiting on the channel to grow to the point where hopefully it can sustain not only my bills, but also my wife's bills and, you know, make it so that we can get on the road in our trailer and go see, uh, go see some awesome stuff. Start a second channel, start a travel channel so that you guys can uh, come along for the journey with us which I think will be pretty cool if we can actually make that happen. Uh, but for now, you know, we're just, we're kind of trying to get our trailer, get the trailer set up for travel and get uh, our income situation set up. Uh, you know, me with the YouTube thing, hopefully. And uh, my wife, you know, she's gonna wanna, she's gonna wanna have something to do. She's not gonna wanna just, you know, sit around and do nothing. She want, she's gonna wanna, <laughs> she's gonna wanna be busy. So, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get back into the swing of actually doing things. Me, I'm trying to. My wife has been this whole time. Um, you know, I've gotten used to not having any kind of a schedule or outside obligations other than just the things I know I have to do for me and my wife. So, it's just been kind of weird. It's kind of weird. It's it's been kind of we. It's been kind of. It's been really nice. I'm sorry. I'm really having a hard time. I have two different thoughts in my head that are competing right now. It's been really nice to not have to have a regular working job because I hate, I hate working for other people. I hate, I hate that whole situation of just, you know, other people being able to tell me what to do. Um, so, you know, I've been wanting for a long time to get to a place where I could just work for myself and not have to worry about uh, having a, a person who's, you know, micromanaging me all day. I, it's just, it's just, it's the worst for me. One of, one of the worst things for me. Uh, hold on, there were two. I always forget sometimes when there's lots of bodies to actually stop and scan, but there are no water worlds or any of the valuable planets, and there are too many bodies here for us to scan. I know it's only five more bodies, but we have to have we have to have some kind of a upper limit for what we're going to do, because it you have to you have to have a balance between making a number making enough jumps an episode and stopping to smell the roses and you know the biological things the the biological equivalent of roses. <laughs> But anyways, you know, uh, I, I've, I, you know, I served as a Marine for 11 years of my life, and then I spent a few years after that, you know, doing school and work, and then I spent another seven years or so doing construction administration, 
you know, I've spent my whole adult life doing work and it's been kind of nice to just take a year off and not have to really do anything that involved anybody else and kind of work on my own stuff. Uh, you know, most people aren't able to do that. So I've been in a fortunate situation where I don't have, I haven't had to deal with that. Uh, too many bodies in this system, so we're going to go ahead and push on. Um, and it's just, it's kind of weird to be back in a situation, even though I'm, it's not like a traditional job. I'm doing volunteer work for the park, which is basically involves, um, you know, the regular task of cleaning up sites after guests have left. Because I'm in, an, I'm in an RV park. I'm in an RV, uh, uh, a national. It's, it's, I don't want to say it's a, it's a San Diego regional park, is what it is. So it's not, it's like, it's not like a national park. It's a regional park, and it's an RV park. There's a bunch of RVs. It's an RV park and campground. There's People have tents and all that kind of stuff here too. Um, so, you know, my regular, one of the regular things that we do is just clean up sites after people have left. For the most part, people clean up after themselves. Every once in a while, you'll get, you'll get some slobs that just leave the site looking, you know, relatively ugh. But for the most part, it's not, you know, it's not hard work by any means. Um, I can't really complain about it because uh, it's just, it's not hard. It's not that difficult. <laughs> this is really not. Um, but at the same time, you know, I've gotten used to kind of just being on my own program and being on my own schedule and doing things when I want to do them rather than, you know, having to set an alarm and wake up when I'm, when I have to. <laughs> I really, I really enjoyed being able to just kind of, you know, work when I want to work rather than having to work when other people need me to work. Um, being on someone else's schedule just is not something I enjoy really really don't enjoy that I like I don't I have no problem with working like I'm not I, I know I I can be pretty lazy about things but for the most part you know I, I need to have something to do I don't like just sitting around lazing about and not doing anything I just don't like doing other people's stuff <laughs> so I guess that's kind of the that's kind of the thing is like I want to spend I want to spend my time doing the things that I want to be doing not what other people not what other people desire so you know but we need money we need to make a living where's this other body well wherever it is oh there it is ended up being nothing moving right along um so you know i just i've always wanted to be self-employed but i've never really been able to figure out a way to jump into that because i don't really have anything that i'm passionate about that i could turn into a business of some kind so I, I just I've really been struggling to figure out how to move away from being an employee and being in and moving into being a, a uh, self-employed person. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. There's no word for that other than just entrepreneur. But I, you know, I'm not. When you think entrepreneur, you think of somebody who is trying to you know go out on their own and build something and I guess technically a youtuber could be considered an entrepreneur but I don't know you just that's not that's not what you think of when you think of an entrepreneur you think of somebody who goes and is going to try to start a business and trying to serve it to serve a need in some capacity and you know I, I don't know I don't know I, I, you think of a certain kind of person when you think of the word entrepreneur and that doesn't really line up with you know the typical YouTuber. I don't know. I, I'm probably wrong. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Are are YouTubers? Are, are people who decide to become full time YouTubers? Are they are they entrepreneurs or are they just uh, you know people hoping to get lucky? Because <laughs> you think of an entrepreneur and you think of somebody who's like wisely investing in trying to start something, and you know. Jumping into YouTube is just a roll of the. It's, it's more like gambling than it is, you know. It's more like gambling than anything else. <laughs> You're just hoping to get lucky enough to be one of the people who actually make it. And I guess you know. I guess entrepreneurs are kind of in the same boat. It just feels like they have a different kind of situation. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm just wrong. I'm a little bit biased towards the whole YouTube thing because I am a very early millennial and. Um, you know, YouTube didn't exist when I was a young adult. It didn't exist until I was well into my... Tw when did it, when did YouTube come out? I don't even remember. I graduated from high school in 2001, so I, you know, YouTube wasn't even YouTube wasn't even a thought back then. 
And now here I am, 20 years later, trying to make a name for myself and make a living on the internet by making video game videos. But, you know, I've always wanted to figure out a way to, you know, turn my, my love of video games into money. I always thought that it would be kind of cool to be like a video game tester to go and, you know, get paid to play video games like that. But if I could get play, if I could get paid to just play video games that I want to play, that's even better. <laughs> so I know I've strayed off of the point for a little bit, but the idea that I'm trying to get to is just that it's it's the work that I'm doing isn't hard. It's just a little bit difficult after a year of not real well i don't know let me put it to you this way it isn't just a year either um i left my last job at the end at the beginning of 2022 i think in february of 2022 and i was on unemployment for the full amount of time which was about six months because you know just i was having a really hard time finding a job and then finally once my unemployment started, started running out i had to figure out something to do so i started doing uh, uber and lyft for a while which you know was really nice i was able to that was another situation where i was able to make my own schedule then we decided we were going to move to mexico because the housing there is much cheaper uh we ended up running into issues there though that made us decide that we were not going to stay um, so, you know, but while we were there, I couldn't work and my wife had her jobs that she was, do her job that she was doing. Now she has two jobs. Um, and, you know, so she was making the, she was making all the money and I wasn't able to do anything else because, you know, I was, I was applying to, I don't know, I had to, I had to have applied to over a thousand jobs over the course of my job search there, trying to find like remote work to do, um, and just I, I got like one interview and never got a call back it was, it was just it was ridiculous so i figured if i'm gonna if i'm gonna be there not really doing anything i might as well try to build up my channel um so yeah over the course of like two years basically i haven't had a regular job where i've been employed and had a schedule and had somebody i had to report to and all that other stuff that you know the average person typically has to deal with and man has it been nice and man do i really want to hurry up and get back to that <laughs> But uh, the, only re the only way that's going to happen is, is if I can figure out a way to make enough money on my own to not have a boss. Um, and I'm hoping that the YouTube thing will be a major component of that. Especially if I can get to the point where I can start a second channel um, doing the travel stuff. So I can be doing the video game stuff and then I'll be doing the travel stuff. And I'll have two different channels that are hopefully making me a decent amount of money each. And uh, I got, hopefully I'll finish my DCS F-18 flight school campaign thing that I've been working on. And maybe people, maybe a bunch of people will want to buy that. And just, I'm trying to come up with a bunch of different things that I can, that I can do that'll make a little bit of money and not have all of my eggs in just the YouTube basket. Assuming I ever even get to the point where, you know, that basket is big enough to sort of semi-rely on. Um, but anyways, I keep straying from the point of just, it's just, it's weird. It's weird to get back into you know, having a regular, a, a semi-regular experience. And even this isn't really that regular of an experience because, you know, A, I'm, it's not a job that pays me per se. I mean, I'm getting, um, I'm getting a free spot to live in my RV in the San Diego area for, you know, 20 hour in exchange for 20 hours of work a week. 20 hours of relatively light work. Let me put it to you that way. It's not like it's, you know, super hard to do. Um, so it's a, I, I feel like it's a pretty good deal, but at the same time, it's also, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm back to, you know, having to be, be responsible to and be, well, be responsible to people again. And I don't really like that part. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of that part. But uh, I think we all have to learn, you know, that as much as you don't necessarily want, ooh, we're, all right, yeah, 8,000, we can, we can swing that. So if you look in the top right corner, you can see that there's four biological signatures on that one. So we're definitely going to go and take a look at that guy to go see what might be. Ooh, five on that one. Okay. Um, so I think what we might end up doing is um, go to the planet where that has five on it. Oh, come on. Because we're getting, uh, we're already at the 20 minute, we're right around the 20 minute mark, and I don't like these episodes to go longer than about 30 minutes. Oh, you're killing me, guys. Where's this last planet? 
I don't see it around the sun. Oh, there it is. Dude, seven. Okay, well, we're going to go to this one that has seven on it, and then next episode is definitely going to be all about going to these biological signatures, because holy shnikes. All right, so let's get lined up with that. And away we go. So, yeah, I just, it's just... We all have to learn... We all have situations or places in our lives, we have phases of our lives where you kind of have to get back into the swing of things, whether it's, you know, getting, you, you've taken some time off of work and now you have to get back to it, or, you know, maybe you left a thing that you were doing for a while and now you have to get back into it again, whether it's work or a hobby. Like, I know a lot of people have hobbies that they would really like to be doing and it can be hard to get back into the swing of doing a hobby, even, if, even though it's something that you really enjoy doing, you you struggle to get back to it because, you know, there's a process that you have to relearn. Uh, for example, um, as a Marine, I was a Marine musician and I was a relatively decent clarinet player for, you know, most of, for about half of my adult life and all of my, you know, middle school and high school and college. And uh, I did a year of college for music education. And, uh, you know, I was, um, I don't like to be arrogant when not whatever possible, but I was definitely in the upper, the higher percentage of clarinet players in the Marine Corps. Um, I probably could have gotten out. I, I, I think I was probably good enough that I could have gotten out and gotten a paid gig as a professional clarinet player in the civilian music community, you know, joined an orchestra or something like that. I was, I was that good. Um, but I was kind of burnt out on music by the time I got uh, my medical discharge from the Marine Corps and I just, you know, kind of dropped it and never picked it back up again. I have my clarinet and it's one of those things that I could pick it back up and start practicing again and get relatively decent again and probably even get myself back to the point where I could uh, be a paid musician again. But it's just one of those things where getting back into the swing of it requires a lot more time and effort than I feel motivated to put into it. <laughs> so, uh, well, you know, you, you get yourself into a place where, you know, you probably should be doing something, but you can't motivate yourself to do it because it's, it's just, there's a very large process associated with it. All right, I believe this one said it had seven biological signatures on it. So yeah, we're gonna come down here. We're not gonna try to find all seven in this episode. I think we'll try to find one. Well, we'll definitely try to find one, maybe two, depending on how long it takes us to find everything. Bacterium cactoida. I don't think we've ever found Cactoida. Fungoida, Osseus, I found, we found those before. Stratum, Frutexa, and Tussock. Okay, well, we're definitely going after some some Cactoida. Holy crap. <laughs> I was trying to find a different word other than crap because I try not to use offensive language, which, you know, crap's not really offensive. But if I can avoid certain kinds of language, I generally try to. Because you never know when there might be kids watching and all that kind of stuff. Okay, Cactoida. We're gonna go up towards that one at tw that big blue spot at 12 o'clock. I am back on a hybrid of keyboard and joystick now. I'm kind of doing a an FPS style, uh, you know, mouse and keyboard FPS setup, except my right hand is on a joystick instead of a mouse right now. So left hand is for thrusting and moving and all that kind of stuff. Right hand is gonna be my joystick for pitch control or uh, for uh, orientation control. So I have a bad feeling that this Cactoida is going to be hard to find because it looks like this is all going to be rocky terrain, which is very difficult to deal with. So that's not going to be good. Hmm. As much as I don't want to, this may be one of those situations where I kind of need to pull out the SRV because I really want to find some Cactoida. Like, really, really. I don't know that we found any of that yet, and uh, it's going to be pretty cool if we find something really super awesome here. Oh, 
Okay, well, it looks like this is relatively flat down here. Get ourselves, get our night vision turned on so that it, it will uh, ideally make it easier to see things once we get down there. The night vision does tend to give you nice outlines of stuff. Get our landing gear down so we uh, can reduce our speed and have a, have a much more manageable, whoa, a much more manageable uh, speed as we're flying across the ground here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, what? Nope. There was some uh, grass over here. Don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. All right, I'm not sure which of the grasses these are, but uh, we're gonna try to grab it if I can get landed. There we go. So let's find out what this is, and then we need to make sure that uh, we're we're not really gonna have time to go through more than one or one or two of these guys because we are uh, we're out of time. But we have uh, we have this planet and at least one or two other. I think there's two other planets that we really need to hit because they all had high diversity. Frutexa Metallicum, dude. Okay. I wonder if they have, uh, I wonder, I wonder if they sing Enter the Sandman. <laughs> uh, I know, that was a lame joke. Okay, so we want to stay in this kind of, this direction, this way, because, um, the Cactoida was, oops, there we go. think that was the grass. That might be our Cactoida. I don't, I'm not going to try to scan it quite yet, because I, I think there might be some grass to my right. But at least now we know. Oh, I thought there was some grass over here. So is this our Cactoida? Dude, look at that. That's cool. All right, we're going to go ahead and do our scan. We'll, we'll, we'll grab the other ones later. I want this. This is cool. Cactoida peparatus. Yellow. That is cool. And I'm pretty sure... I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's a first for the channel. I don't recall ever having come across Cactoida. So that is awesome. We can find the Frutexa again later. We'll find it in the next step. Oop, I a little too hard, sorry. All right, hopefully we can find another set here pretty quickly. Yeah, is this a bit more Fungoida? Or I'm sorry, Cactoida. There's Fungoida here too. There's Cactoida and Fungoida, we need to find both. Come on, give me the terrain. There we go. Definitely much easier to do precision flying when you have the joystick. It's it's easier to do. It's possible to do with the, with the your keyboard only, but realistically, you want to be having a joystick, especially for this close to the ground stuff. All right, we need one more. And then that next episode is probably going to be spent entirely on this planet because we have six other species to grab. And I want to try to grab all of them. Because, you know, how often do we come across planets like this? I think we want to go this way. Oh, wrong button. That's I'm, it was supposed to be shift. Supposed to be shift. I, I try to do uh, vertical. I try to do upward thrust 
when I do when I'm trying to flip around backwards, I'm trying to do upward thrust through 90 de or through you know through 90 degrees, yeah, and then re do a downward thrust to start pushing it because I'm trying to push us in the direction that I want to be going. So I'm not necessarily the best at it. I have a bad feeling that there's not any more fungoida over here. Or I'm sorry, cactoida. But we may need to... swing around. I just We just need to find one more. So there's our stratum, but unfortunately we're not quite ready for that yet. Oh, because I was holding space. Oop. That's why I have shields. Come on, where's the fungoid or the cactoida? I'm so used to fungoida. We've never found cactoida before, so that's it's really hard for me to remember that that's what I'm saying, not the not the other one. Uh, I'm kind of lost at this point. Oh, come on. Oh. That's our uh Gotta get used to flying with these controls again. See if the night vision helps out at all. Well, I didn't want this episode to be this long. We're supposed to just have a nice, quick find our stuff and go, but the Cactoida doesn't want to cooperate. Oops. I don't even remember where it was. I allowed myself to get too turned around and now I don't know where it is. So that's the fungus. Not even the fungoida, it's the, the more common one. I forget what it's called. I really wish you could access the heat maps from the surface here. Because I don't remember where I was. I've gotten turned around and lost. So now I'm just wandering around and hoping to find one. Yes, I think these are it. Alright, anyways, hopefully these are far enough away from wherever we were that we're going to be able to get our last one. <laughs> Ended up taking an extra five minutes on this episode because of that, but whatever. Make sure this is actually the last one before I start doing my exit because we could have circled all the way back around and been right in the same patch, which would be pretty lame. All right, so anyways, hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button if you did so the YouTube algorithm will know and send the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not going to subscribe, please consider doing so now so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your feed and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click that join button. Check out the list of options available there. Early access is not the only thing. There are more depending on which tier you choose. So check those out. Decide if any of those are right for you. And if not, there you can also do a one-time thanks button which is kind of the youtube version of a tip if you'd still like to support the channel but only do it once uh so again thank you very oh uh, direct contributions are greatly appreciated i want to make sure i say that and a critical component to helping to turn this into that dream of becoming a full-time gig so again thank you very much for your time hope you guys had fun and are enjoying this journey be sure to come back for the next one and i'll see you then